There's no mag in the mag well. Gun is clear. No, I did not let the slide go. Uh, so, I took the gun out again. Um, so we went to the range last night. The gun now has 455 rounds through it. Um, if you're not aware, uh, this is the TSIS uh, carry, uh, what is it, the carry nine, uh, DS9. Uh, so it is a um, commander size gun, 4.25 inch barrel. Um, it is an actual 2011. Uh, we've already covered what constitutes a 2011. Uh, this is not a Rock Island style of gun. Uh, that's a para patterned 1911. This is a 2011 patterned 1911. Um, it's got all the same bits as the Cicado pretty much. Um, shares the same mags as well. Uh, so we've covered all that before, but uh, what we did kind of explain was that the, the trigger was heavy. Um, so between the, la uh, the last range visit and the visit before, uh, the, the weight of the trigger has not changed. Um, it is at the lower end of four pounds. Uh, the wall is still thick. Um, it's better than it was out of the box, but it's still thick. It still kind of affects my uh, sight picture. So a lot of people say that that's a problem with the shooter. Um, if the trigger sucks and I'm having issues actuating the trigger without pulling myself off target, that's a problem. Uh, so not exactly a shooter issue if I can not you know, if I, if I pick up another gun, another 1911, and I don't have that issue, yeah, I, I think that's a problem. Um, so, we did two things when we went to the range, this to go around. Um, it wasn't a matter of shooting as much ammo as possible. Uh, we've got pretty much wear in. Uh, the gun is wearing in well. Um, in fact, um, during this range session, I think, I shot 130 something rounds. Uh, some of that was JHP. A majority of it was um, just regular range ammo. Uh, Fiocchi, um, Remington, um, what else? And, and you know, just, just regular FMJ, right? Range ammo. Um, so the idea was to kind of take the gun and test the irons because I thought that I was having a problem with the irons. Um, they are taller than normal. Um, and since I have the, the optic on, I had to shoot through the optic. So what we did was we tested uh, that one third co-witness. Um, it is perfect. And I was actually able to nail some targets, uh, I mean, some, some, you know, I actually put rounds on the dot, on a small dot uh, from, from range uh, without issue with the irons just by themselves. So as a test, and yes, I tested initially at five yards. Remember, I'm trying to just test the, the irons. I'm not trying to test at 25 yards. Uh, there's, there's really no need for that. Uh, I'm testing the irons and I test them up close and maybe I walk them out uh, a bit. Uh, it, it just, I, I don't do 25 yards and not with testing. You know, you, what you want to do is you want to take factors out of the equation other than uh, the sights themselves and how your sight picture and things like that uh, when, when testing the irons. Uh, so there's really no need to be testing at 20 plus yards in my opinion you know I mean uh, so this is where I was shooting you know at five yards which kind of astounded me because I wasn't getting nearly that amount of accuracy uh, the range visit before I, and I was, comp I was I believe in the video I was complaining about that uh, so I don't have a problem putting 
the irons on a dot from you know from range. Um, I tested out at 10 yards. That's as far as I shot, in, you know, during the range session. Uh, but even then, I was still nailing them. Um, so this is with irons. So the rest of these are me zeroing in the gun, uh, the optic. So <clears throat> with the irons being tested and me being able to hit where I wanted, um, I decided to turn on the optic. So when I when I was sighting in through that irons, I turned off the, the red dot. I turned it back on and initially was hitting four inches low. Using the same, you know, I guess uh trigger pulls that I was shooting over here. So as you can see, I was shooting over here and aiming here at this dot with the irons. So when I started shooting with the optics, I'm aiming here, but I'm hitting here. So I believe it's one, two, three, four. Those were the first shots. And you see these dots here, I'm walking it up. Um, so what I did was uh, I saw that I was hitting four low and for the Siley Cat optic, you use this screw to adjust and turn it clockwise to get the dot to go up. Uh, the thing about the Siley optic is, is that when you turn that, you don't feel the the little ticks that kind of denote uh, the amount of maybe mills. You know, I haven't read the manual, uh, but it's it's pretty much the same as any other red dot. You know, you turn it. Uh, now the thing was, what I had to do is I had to kind of guesstimate how far to turn. So I turned maybe a quarter of a turn and then tried here and I was shooting, I uh, believe here. So I kept having to walk it up and finally I was hitting there. And so I decided to move over to this dot. I'm trying to get it on camera here. And uh, I was shooting here. So I made some adjustments. I, I raised it up a little bit and then I was shooting here so I went up a little bit too far and I didn't move over enough here same thing and so I put another target up and I tested irons again I was hitting here and then I did a rapid dump and I was pulling all over here so I mean it's it's accurate as much as the shooter is kind of putting in his work uh, I'm not a shooting expert and I don't promise to be. So there it is, you know. So what I did was uh, a range visit was kind of shutting down. Uh, I, I could only uh, reserve it for an hour. Uh, it's been super busy at my range. Um, so I have to rely on the re reservation system to kind of even get in there. You know, I'm a member, so I, I get, you know, the perk of kind of reserving a, a lane. So, uh, as long as there's uh, you know availability um, so the last couple of times I made reservations and there was like two and three reservations left last night there was uh, three and I made the appointment at, at midday yesterday so uh yeah so what I did was uh, instead of wasting another target I have these one inch dots and initially when I was shooting here I was shooting at 10 yards I do believe for here I pulled these back to seven because I, I still wanted to kind of test the optic and try and get myself under control. So this represents 17 rounds here. This represents 17 rounds here. So first I shot here and uh, you can see I touched the, the one inch target maybe three times. Um, I wasn't kind of tamping down on the gun. Uh, trigger pulls were a little bit better than before. Uh, and I'm still fighting the wall, remember? So um, it's a little, while it's a little bit better and a little bit tighter than some of the other groups, uh, besides that group, that group is actually pretty tight. It's just kind of skewed, a little left. This one is a little bit more spread out, but more in line with that dot, uh, the bullseye. So down here, 
I had the same bullseye, but I ate it all through. So this right here represents, even these three represents that whole mag. So for the first half of that mag, I noticed I was shooting here and there was a couple here. Uh, and then I had one stray that was here. So I pulled one shot. I stopped. I noticed how tight the group was. I brought the target toward me so that I can kind of look. And I was like, damn, okay, so keep doing what I'm doing. So I had a firm grip on the gun, uh, making sure that, you know, a couple of times you'll see in the video, I'm kind of, you know, my support hand is kind of moving a bit. I made sure it wasn't moving. And the result is this. So this is a prime example of how the gun would shoot if someone is doing what they're supposed to be doing. That is a tight fucking group in my opinion. Uh, and if you count maybe the first five, the first five are all open here. So I did a good job here. Um, and two of these were from the, the second half of that mag. So I pulled, I ended up pulling two shots in that second half with a total of pulling three shots from that whole 17 round mag. I believe this was either 17 or 18. It was 17. Uh, so yeah, but this represents accuracy with a dot. Um, so a couple of things. If you notice here, and I'm not sure, you know, with, I'm using a GoPro to capture this footage. So uh, if I put the gun too close to the lens, uh, it's gonna blur out. So I'm hoping that you see this without any any blurring. But uh, I had to put a shim between the slide and the optic. And let's talk about that a second because I posted about this on, on uh, I believe it was either, the, I think it was the thesis uh, subreddit. And uh, got a little bit of flack. People see something that's not a hollow sun or a trigicon and they think that the optic is shitty. Um, I know for a fact that this gun, I mean, this optic doesn't have any mounting issues um, and it shoots fine. Um, this is proof of that. <clears throat> the problem I was having was I initially installed this uh, and I can see a little bit of I will talk about that in a second uh, I initially installed the optic without the shim uh, this gun does not require an optics plate it's direct mount the problem I was having was is that initially I put the, the optic on the gun and when looking at it like this I could see daylight between the optic and the uh, and this in the slide cut it's a red flag uh, so I took it off I took off the optic and I placed it on the table this is a flat table if there were any issues with that optic it would have been wobbling it wouldn't have been sitting flat so my first thing was is that there was nothing wrong with the optic so I put it back on same thing happened uh, and in fact, when I put it on, the gum, uh, the, the optic was sitting, let me look at the camera here, optic was sitting up like that. And then when I looked through the glass, the dot was way up here. So the manufacturer said that when they ship these out of the box, when they ship these, when you open up the box and you turn on the red dot, it's the, the, the the dot within the glass is, is, is centered. So if I installed it and it's pointing up, that indicates probably an issue with either the optic or the cut. So the next thing I did was I took off the optics, the optic, and I found this shim. So this optic shim is designed to give you more, I guess, uh, adjustability when when trying to zero the optic because if the cut is wrong or the optic is wrong uh, you can account 
you can you can make up for that by using a shim. So the con with that is is that the shim is going to point the uh, the optic downward. The way I have it is the the thick part of the wedge or the shim is on the back. So it's really it's pointing the the optic downward a bit. So I needed that to get rid of the fact that it wasn't mating properly with the cut. I did the same thing with a hollow sun. I have a hollow sun on my other gun. It's a 507K. No problems whatsoever on that particular gun. I put that optic on this gun and it was point, you know, the dot was upward and the sight was pointing up. Two different types of optics, a cheaper brand and the hollow sun, which is not exactly, it's it's probably mid-level or, you know, depending on if, what you're comparing it to, it could be a cheaper, but it, they're proven. Hollow suns are proven. The fact that I was having an issue with a 507K and this Siley Cat indicates that maybe there's a problem with the cut on the gun. So I said that. Everyone ignores the fact that I worked myself through this to kind of make that, that determination. And the only thing they're seeing is Siley. Oh, that's a cheap optic. Did the optics the problem? If the optics the problem, it should go away if I switch to the hollow sun. I switch to the hollow sun, the problem didn't go away. So what does that mean? There's a problem with the cut. So I posted it on the subreddit Someone else chimed in and said they had the exact same issue and they started out with a hollow sun and they had to use a shim to properly get it sighted in. Someone else chimed in and said they were using a 407, uh, 507K, same deal, except they took it off. It, it took them a, a few times to kind of get it mounted and then it was fine. He also said that he saw daylight between the two parts. So apparently there might be a problem with this, with this cut. There's nothing wrong with admitting that there might be a problem with the gun. For people that are fans of TSIS, they're not doing TSIS any favors by blindly accepting that or kind of just saying that there's not a problem with the gun, there's a problem with the optic. So I highly doubt that I have a problem with both of my optics, especially when I can fit them on other guns and they work fine. It's a problem with the cut. So um, I put, you know, I installed the shim on there and was actually able to get the optic to be centered in the glass without zeroing. Uh, now the problem was is that when it was time to zero, of course, I'm hitting four inches low uh, but the shim, because of that, I mean, I have enough adjustability. I had enough adjustability to where I can get that dot raised up four inches. So it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a problem. This is a kind of a cheap fix to kind of fix that. But the underlying problem is that there's something wrong with that cut. And I know that, you know, some people don't like, they don't want to hear that their favorite, I guess, 1911 producer uh, might have a, you know, they might be generating faulty guns. Um, so they'll ignore it. But let's talk about weapon mounted lights. So the TSIS representative on, uh, I believe, uh, either 1911 Ethics or the other forum, uh, 1911 Forum. The one that has the TSIS sub forum, I believe it's 1911 forum. Uh, so the, the TSIS representative stated up front that there was a problem with how they cut the rail into the, the carry model of the gun. He said that the duties, they'll fit standard uh, sized uh, weapon mounted lights. For the carry, the carry's not going to be able to fit most of those lights. Um, he said that they might fit the smaller lights. Uh, so someone on the subreddit complained because they couldn't get their their carry 
to be, I guess, to, to use most 90%. So they were at, they were at a range or they, they were at the gun store. They picked up their, their carry and before even taking it home, he wanted to buy a weapon mounted light. So they, they were trying to find a, a light for him. Everything that they had in stock, but one would not fit this rail. Every single one of them that they had in stock. And I believe there was like 10 or eight or 10 different lights that he tried to mount on here. Only one would work. So what he did was he needed something, you know, he, some people, they, they, they're driven toward having a weapon mounted light. Uh, me, I'm not, I'm not like that, but what he did was in order to get, you know, to, in order to be capable of carrying with the light, uh, he, he said, I don't want the gun. So instead he got a Mac DS instead. The Mac DS doesn't have that problem because it has a full rail. So if Tesis can fuck up a rail, they can fuck up a cut. This isn't this isn't like a new problem for the carry models. For the last two years, I've seen people bitching about the single stack carry models because of the exact same thing. So if you take this problem with the with the rail being non-standard, it can certainly be applied to this cut as well, this optics cut. Another problem I have was when I started to use the shim, I actually had to fit the shim. That shim is designed to fit 507Ks and RMSCs. That's the way I bought it. So I've used it before on another gun with the hollow sun, there was no issue. With this particular gun, it fit on the optic fine. It, on the bot, if you flip the optic over and you place the, the shim on it, it fit without issue. When I tried to do the same thing to the cut, you know, take the shim, put the optics over here to the side and try to fit the shim on the cut, it wouldn't work. Yet another piece of substantiating proof that there's something wrong with the cut. So, um, Again, people don't like to hear that. They, they consider it ugly or unfaithful to the brand. You know, when, when people do these reviews, um, they don't talk about shit like this. This is another reason why I do their reviews. This type of shit needs to be fixed. It doesn't make any sense to add an optics cut if you're not trying to make it standard. Uh, so, so they need to fix that. They need to fix the rail. Both of those are, are kind of issues. I don't give a fuck about how it's supposed to be a budget 2011 because other brands that are cheap like Rock Island, I mean, yeah, you're not going to find any Rock Islands with uh, optics cut, right? But you damn sure won't have a problem with their rails. They need to fix that. Um, but other than that, it's fine, you know. Uh, when you buy a budget-minded gun, I don't know if the mantra is supposed to be, uh, you're gonna find some issue somewhere. A lot of people kind of use that in the, as an excuse. Well, what do you expect? It's a it's a it's a budget gun. Um, Several hundred dollars is still kind of high as far as budget is concerned. Yes, it's cheap as far as 2011s go, but uh, a selling point for a 2011 is the grip and the modularity of it and because the frame and the grip are separated. Uh, it's not because of a optics cut and a rail. That should be a standard thing. Again, once again, I must have said this five times already, they need to get, they need to fix that and that. Other than that, I'm happy with the gun. Uh, the gun is filthy, um, almost 500 rounds through it, not a hiccup, we didn't have any hiccups whatsoever uh, and between that 455 rounds there was only been one hiccup in three range visits um, the fact that 
the gun is dirty as hell. It's a it's pretty it's a 1911 platform. It's a 2011 platform. Uh, those are known to be kind of finicky when it comes to cleanliness and things like that, right? I lubed it once. That was the first day I got it. Um, so it hasn't been lubed since. It's still eating and not choking on things. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up. That's the slide, the frame fitment. It's not tight. It could be looser. So I expected that. But because of that, it's probably why the gun hasn't choked yet. It, I mean, when I say it's filthy, it's filthy. You can see carbon all along the, the barrel there, the chamber. You can see it's all filthy there. I have not wiped it down. Um, the, the ramp, I'm not sure if the camera will catch it. It's, it's fucking filthy. It's supposed to be silver. It looks as black as this frame. But it, nonetheless, it's eating everything. Uh, my next uh, thing to do with this gun is probably buy a couple of more mags. Um, you can get them for $50 a piece, uh, $49.99. Uh, that's actually pretty cheap as far as checkmate mags, you know, uh, staccato pattern mags are concerned uh, you can also find them at gun mag warehouse for 43 bucks I thought I saw another reviewer said uh, that's that's pretty damn cheap so uh, if you need mags this is the time to get them because I have foresee folks grabbing as much as they can and uh, <laughs> maybe they're being a check make mags shortage uh, I've already heard some people saying that they're hard to find uh, at some places um, I think that's it uh, this weekend I will probably take this thing down to a detail strip uh, because I'm curious about the trigger wall it's still a little bit stiff those three flyers that I pulled when I shot this group here are almost certainly caused by that wall um, I mean, it's not a huge deal because in the in the big scheme of things, my shit's gonna look like this if I'm in a in an actual legit shoot, um, and probably even they're probably gonna be more even more spread out. Uh, so I'm not so concerned about how my type my groupings are when shooting at a range at a non-moving target at, at seven yards, but it's representative of the fact that, you know, like we were saying before, I've done my job in pulling the trigger and controlling uh, uh, the gun as I'm pulling the trigger uh, and all but three were in a tight. That looks like a two inch group. So there it is. I, I'm using a cheap ass optic that works. It has not moved. Uh, we will evaluate it. Um, this optic does, and it's got like a chip already. I think that's from a brass. Um, so the, the thing about the optic is, is that if I need to change the battery, it's under the, it's under the optic. So I would probably lose my zero and have to re-zero once I get the optic, in, uh, the battery in. So what I'm gonna do is right now I'm using the battery that came with the gun. I'm gonna go get Duras, uh, you know, a, a couple of Duracells and replace that and see how long it lasts. Should last fine because it's a shake awake type dot. It's got similar technology. Um, I don't have it dialed all the way up. It's a green dot. That's the first type of uh, handgun optic that I have. Uh, all of them are red. Well, I only have two. Uh, well, actually, I have three. Uh, but those two are red. This is the first green one. I'm not noticing a huge difference there. I mean, I don't have... I mean, it, it starred a little bit. But as I dial it back, it's not so much. So it's, it's, it's not a huge deal. I mean, 
Some people say that their astigmatism is lessened with a green dot. I'm not noticing any difference there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than the fact that the rail is shitty and I'm actually looking for uh, that one brand of weapon mounted light that does fit this gun because that will probably help me at the range uh, by balancing out the gun a bit. Um, the rail here, I could my, you know, I've already stated to someone that if this bugs me too much, I'll just send the gun out and they can do a proper cut on the gun. Even if it just means them kind of flattening it out a bit. Uh, or I can just continue to use the shim. Uh, not sure. But, I mean, it is what it is, right? And there you go. Tisa's carry. Double stack.